Warning, the chemicals used in this experiment are, ex are acidic and or poisonous and can cause severe injury or death if misused. These reactions and their byproducts, some of which are toxic gases, are poisonous and like all dangerous chemicals should be treated with care. LDC does not copyright this video but does not encourage or support the duplication of these experiments. Please do not attempt these experiments without supervision. And there's a handy tip for anyone working with any kind of uh, strong acid. It's called the alphabetical order rule, which says to always add acid to water. The correct way, when you add acid to water, the acid protonates, or adds a proton, to the water to form hydronium ions, or H3O+. Plus. The plus is there because H3O is a cation, and the reaction is somewhat controlled still will get warm, it'll do the same thing, but not nearly as much as doing it incorrectly, which is when you add water to acid. If you add water to acid, the acid will immediately try to protonate the water. It'll do the same thing. They'll both do the same thing. That's H2O plus your acid equals H3O plus your acid, which is now diluted. Um, it will protonate the water, but since the water is coming in, the, fl the flow of water would probably start slow and it would and there would be more acid than water in the very beginning and the acid could do the process of protonization explosively and it could throw acid everywhere which I have experienced while making the LDC chem videos. Our first experiment today is making iron 2 chloride and hydrogen gas. This one is the longest experiment, so we're going to do this first and let it sit. What you want to do is get just an iron nail, like in this case I have a horseshoe nail, and sand off any oxide to expose the shiny metal underneath. Next, you get your hydrochloric acid and a glass dropper or dispenser. And I generally add 10 drops. hydrochloric acid into the test tube. Then we place our nail into the acid solution. And as you may see now, it's already starting to fizz a little bit. And we'll let that go while we do the other two experiments. All right, as we're waiting for our iron chloride to finish forming, our next experiment is going to be making aluminum chloride using aluminum welding wire. Same as the last one, I always put 10 drops of hydrochloric acid into the test tube. And then, you take your aluminum wire, like I have it balled up on the end, and you place it into the acid. Now this one gets a little bit volatile. You'll see it's not fizzing very much right now, but if you just leave it for a few minutes it should really take off. I'll set that down. The reaction's already starting to accelerate. You can see it's now turning gray. I'll set that down. As you can see the smoke rising, that is chlorine gas. I want to be very careful not to inhale that. As chlorine is very toxic to pretty much everything. As you can see there's quite a substantial amount coming out of my test tube there. Mixed in with that chlorine is also hydrogen gas, which is extremely flammable. 
So you want to minimize the amount that comes out of there. This amount shouldn't really do anything. As you can see, it's really starting to turn gray and black. And all the gray is the aluminum chloride that's forming, among other things. Welding wire is not pure aluminum. This experiment can also be done with aluminum foil or even pieces of an aluminum can. They just have to be small enough to fit in a test tube. All right, our last experiment today is turning copper carbonate, this blue substance here, into copper metal. This is kind of a double experiment, but it's fun to do anyway. Um, like always, I pre-measure my materials. I have about an eighth of a teaspoon above my tube here. And what you're going to do now is add 10 drops of hydrochloric acid into the test tube. I would like to warn you in advance that this does produce some pretty gnarly fumes, so you should stand well back. Um, it just about got me yesterday when I was rehearsing this. Um, but the copper carbonate should turn kind of a highlighter green, about the color of Mountain Dew. So I'm going to add my 10 drops of hydrochloric acid into the test tube and let it dissolve. As you can see now, it's kind of a nice yellow-green color there. Not blue anymore. That's what's supposed to happen. Now the copper is now in solution with the hydrochloric acid. And among other things, there's copper chloride in there. Now to precipitate the copper out of solution, um, you take more aluminum wire or foil and insert it into the copper. Now this one is volatile as well, so anything with aluminum and hydrochloric acid is pretty volatile. So I'll place that in there. As you can see it does not like that acid very much at all. And as you can see there's already copper forming on the aluminum wire. This one, just like the aluminum chloride, does get very hot, so you want to do it in a glass test tube. And you can also see that there was some hydrogen emitted because the water is condensing on the inside of my test tube, and that's because when the hydrogen combined with the oxygen and the air around it, it formed water. That's one of your most basic chemistry experiments. So we'll let that go and we'll check up on all our reactions in uh, about five minutes. Here we are about uh, five minutes later and let's check up on our solutions. Uh, the first experiment, the first one we did was making the iron 2 chloride, which as you can see is still fizzing a little bit, but made a nice yellow green color. The yellow comes from iron 3 plus, which is a slightly less common iron ion. They're both pretty common, but for the most part this is iron 2 chloride. Our next experiment is our aluminum chloride reaction, which as you can see has turned into a bubbly mass of gray paste. Um, the paste is aluminum chloride mixed with other impurities. Aluminum chloride is actually a white solid, so there's some other metals in this aluminum wire. And our last reaction was pulling copper metal from copper carbonate. As you saw in the first section of this experiment, we have a nice reaction when we added the hydrochloric acid to the blue copper carbonate. It reduced to kind of a green-yellow liquid, which was actually copper chloride and hydrogen gas. Now, after we added the aluminum wire, you can see that the aluminum has taken the place of the copper and left the copper metal 
by itself as its own solid. When we added the aluminum wire to the copper chloride solution, it became aluminum chloride, which is actually clear, and copper metal. The copper settled out in a single displacement reaction. All right, finally for our disposal portion of this experiment, you want to handle all your compounds with care because sometimes not all the hydrochloric acid um, dissolves out and they, they still generally are acidic. I'm going to take my pH paper which has been exposed to acid fumes so it might not be entirely accurate as you can see it turned red indicating a very low pH and I'll drop that in there and as you can see it's turned a nice olive green which means it's with this brand of pH paper which means it has a pH of about eight and a half nine maybe nine and a half you don't want the pH to be too high when disposing of acids basically we're turning the acid back to water with a base because if the base is too high and the acid is pH is too low it could just go ballistic and I've had that happen where it splatters all over the place you always want to wear safety glasses and basically you pour your solutions into there and you, as you're gonna see not all of our acid is completely out of there first off we're gonna empty in our aluminum chloride as you can see starts to fizz next remove the nail drop that in there and then drop in your iron 2 chloride as you can see and probably hear that it didn't like that one much and finally our copper covered wire drop that in and our aluminum chloride that was left over and you may get an odor that smells like fish it's kind of an interesting odor I've never had that happen before you want to leave it in there overnight so it can neutralize all the way and then you can just pour it out down the sink